Hi, um, good morning, good afternoon. My name is Fernando Otero. I'm gonna be talking about fast feature delivery in times of hyper growth. Um, let me tell you a little bit about myself first. Uh, I'm VP of engineering at Rappi. Uh, I've been doing software for more than 18 years now and doing personalization and search since 2015. Um, I have a team of about 30 developers that we focus mainly on search at Rappi. And what is Rappi? So Rappi, it's a super app in Latin America. Rappi, you can think of it of an app in your phone where you can order anything from supermarkets. Uh, we deliver your butcher from next door or your favorite bread from a, a bakery that is a couple of miles away from your place. Uh, we also have e-commerce, so you can order an iPhone, you can order a fridge for your kitchen, you can have some other things that within the app that are not de deliverables, uh, like you can book a hotel room, you can book a flight, um, there are pets, there are live concerts within the app. Uh, so it's an app that started business in 2015, around 2015, and in 2019 received $1 billion uh, my, sorry, investment from SoftBank. Uh, so as you can imagine, we grew a lot and super fast. I joined Rappi in mid-2019 uh, to start unifying some of the search experiences that we had. Um, so that growth comes with some problems, some challenges in my opinion, which is a lot of chaos. The way we started to grow was giving independence to each team. So restaurants team had their own stack, supermarkets had their own stack, and every single team had their own technology stack and different technologies. So to give you an idea, we have more than a, hundred, a thousand microservices in production, uh, that is, what I'm more than one microservice per developer. Uh, I'm written in different languages. So as I said, each vertical, each uh, business unit had their own technology. So there are some things written in Golang, some things in Rustlang, some things in Java, Kotlin, Python, Node, you name it. Uh, my team in particular, we uh, started to unify all that, but we mainly work with Golang and there are a couple of Node.js. Uh, services still. And we don't have a proper staging environment, so we only have development, uh, which is an environment where we have fake data and production. So those are the two states, and that's the scenario that I that I found when I joined Rappi. Um, so the first use case was that I needed to get the data right to prove that all the things that I was going to to develop, all the features that we were going to put in production were actually worthwhile. Uh, so I, I need to have good tracking and a way to put things and to test them. Luckily, when, when I joined, I realized that we had sli sp split, which I never worked with it before. And, um, and we noticed that there was these cool things called the targeting rules and whitelists, and we use them a lot. Uh, we have we operate in nine countries. I didn't say that before. Uh, it's Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia, the three big ones. And then we have Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Ecuador, Peru, Costa Rica. Um, and the thing is, we want to put things, we want to iterate fast. So one of the things we do is we use there there is there are two control groups in basically every single experiment that we run we create one split where we assign five percent of the this is the configuration for that split at the beginning of a, a, a development cycle which lasts two months we define a split that has uh, the name of the cycle and uh, a queue a control group which, where we assign 5% of the users. 
and then 95% of users will receive new features. So how this works is you, you can think of this as those 5% of users will not receive any single new feature on their app. They, they will be stable, and by the end of the cycle, we can measure how much we improve in all the different experiments that we, we have run. And um, then what we do is on every single split that we put in production, we create a targeting rule where we basically assign that segment of users to a control group. And this control group is basically the same as the baseline for the experiment. So they, they have different names, but the configuration, the configuration is exactly the same. So in this way, in each single split, 5% of the users will have the default value, and those users will have all the default value for all the other splits. And then we can configure the, the current split with the allocations that we need. Uh, and for instance, 50% will receive the baseline, which is the same as the control group, plus all the other features that they might be using, and the new version that we want to measure with, that, that we want to measure against. And then the other thing that we do is we deploy incrementally in different countries. For us, Brazil, Mexico, and Colombia are super important, are the big countries that we cannot mess with. And as I said, we have no staging environment with real data to test on. So usually what we do is we have a targeting rule that says it's the u if the user is in Uruguay, Argentina, Chile, Peru, Ecuador, or Costa Rica, we will deploy the feature. Uh, and maybe um, and we're more aggressive on those. Uh, and then when we see that in those countries it works good, we start increasing the traffic in the rest of the countries. So for instance, in this case, we're assigning 5% uh, uh, of the user to the control group, obviously. And then the rest is split. Then we, we assign uh, a percentage, a small percentage to the own user. And then the baseline has a bigger one. So we measure, we take a look at the metrics. And if it goes well in, in search, for instance, add to cart the percentage of people that actually add a product to cart after doing a search. Um, if that increases or we see that is statistical significance or, or it's moving forward, uh, it's looking good, we increase that percentage uh, to 25%, 50%, and then to 100%, and then we roll it out to all the other countries. So this is kind of a standard, but the only difference, at least the thing that I wanted to share with you, is that we have a control group. We, have, we basically manage two control groups. One for the experiment per se, and the null one that lasts two months, and it's a control group across all experiments that we run. The other thing that we use Split for is for doing dark releases. And dark releases are super important to us, mainly because, as I said before, we don't have a staging environment. So suppose, and, and this is a real world scenario, so um, we, we needed to create a ranker. So when I joined Rappi, basically how it worked was a user types in a search. Let's say he searches, he or she searches for burger. It will execute this search on Elasticsearch and will return the results to the front end. Now, we need to personalize that and to change the ranking of those results. In order to do that, we said, okay, we need a new microservice that will get the list of products that we want to show to a user and reorganize those, re-rank those, and serve them. The problem with that is that there are some performance issues that we're, we don't know how much traffic this service will be able to handle. Uh, it's a new service going to production that will receive all the search, all the search searches from Rappi uh, at the same time. So we wanted to do it incrementally. We wanted to do a stress testing. The thing with stress testing, it's that it's difficult to do. I've done it in a, different, in a previous company uh, for search too. It's super expensive because uh, you need to create a 
you have to have a cluster, a search cluster, uh, the database Elasticsearch of Solar in that case, when I did it was Solar. Um, it's big uh, and you, you have to be able to replicate real data from users, like real behavior. And there are ways to do that, but uh, it takes time. Uh, for me, it took more than a month uh, and team working at night. Um, so it, it, it wasn't easy. So at Rappi, we, we didn't have a staging environment. We, ha we only have dev. Um, so there was no option to do all that and to, to spend more than a month creating the, the environment that we needed to test uh, one service. So what we did is we decided to use split for this. And, we, and basically what we do is we deploy a version with a split that whenever it has a search, it does the, the search on the database, then gets the results, then evaluates the split. And if the user belongs to the segment that should be re-ranked, the, the results should be re-ranked, we do an asynchronous call to a new serve, the new service, but we won't wait for the answer. Uh, and we won't do the, anything with the answer for that. We just call it and forget about it and return to the user. So in that way, we're not affecting anything in production or mostly anything. And we are hitting the new service. So we put that in production. We assign five percent. We assign five percent of the traffic, and we start to measure. And measure in this case is not business metrics. We go to our APM and take a look at memory consumption, uh, response time, and we look at 90, 99 percent of, of response time, and we see okay, yeah, the performance is not the best. We need to improve something here. Once we once everything looks good, we increase the percentage of traffic to 5%, then 10%, 25%. Um, it happened with one of the services that we realized after hitting 50%, we leave the service running in that state. Or act after 50%, actually, in that in this stage, we go to 100%. And when we reach to 100%, we're basically hitting the service with all the traffic in production, but not waiting for the reply. We leave the service leaving in production uh, with 100% of the traffic from for a week. That time gives us time to see how it responds to peak of traffic. So for instance, in restaurants, uh, days where you have a, a soccer match, uh, we have a lot of orders. And um, usually Friday night, Saturday night. And also, it gives time for some things like, for instance, memory leaks to appear. Um, so it happened in the past. So you see the memory leak, you roll it back. It's super easy to roll back because you just go to UI and assign 0% of the traffic and iterate. And when, you, when we feel that it's ready, when it's 100% of the traffic, then we create a pull request, changing that asynchronous call to a synchronous call, and we move the traffic back to 5%. And this time, on this iteration, we not only look at the APM, we only look, we also look at business metrics. So, because end of the day, you want to impact the business. So, um, we look at the APM with real traffic, and we look at the business metrics with the real traffic, and start increasing traffic. Uh, so, 5%, 10%, 25%, 50%, and then in 50%, 50% this and 50% without traffic, we measure for at least one week. Usually, we we usually test our splits for a week or two until we get statistical significance, but we have a lot of traffic. So that happens pretty frequent, pretty fast uh, in search. When you have 50% uh, in Brazil, for instance, it's like one day or two days. But still, we need to account for seasonality. So we wait. We always wait at least minimum one week. When it's big, it's usually two weeks. Uh, and if it looks good, then we start increasing to up to 100%. And that's how we deploy to production new services. We actually used the same approach to do a migration from Elasticsearch. We used to have Elasticsearch in public cloud, and we migrated to private cloud, uh, and we did. We did basically this. We created 
instead of calling a, a new microservice, we call the private version. From, we were using the public. We we call the the private uh, Elasticsearch and see how it behaves. And uh, that was pretty sweet because we did the migration without downtime in less than one month. Uh, so it was super cool. So the advantages of this is that it's way, way cheaper than creating an environment and having the team building and analyzing if the data is right, if the user behavior is right. You test with real data. It's super easy to roll back because you just go to split UI and you change the percentages of traffic. And it's already in production. So yeah, it's I think it's all wins. And basically these are the two use cases that we that we have used split with uh, mostly in or the most important most interesting ones that I that I wanted to share with you today. Uh, thank you very much. And I think we have a spot for questions on Slack. Thank you.